In 2015, during the feud between Drake and Meek Mill, a rapper named Quentin Miller was exposed to be Drake's ghostwriter. And while being outed as the man who wrote lyrics for a rapper who is as braggadocious, territorial, and petty as the Six God can lead to some unwanted attention, you would think that simply being affiliated with Drake's team would at least lead to a better lifestyle or some level of financial freedom. However, the drama that ensued afterwards led to one of the most dramatic downfalls and is a story that many hip-hop purists rarely discuss. After he was exposed, Quentin Miller reached the lowest point in his life, instead of flourishing to his higher purpose as Drake might have hoped. My name is Luesta, and this is how Drake ruined his ghostwriter's life. Born on October 10th, 1989 in Atlanta, Georgia, Quentin Miller started writing raps in his teens while being homeschooled, going by the stage name Myla, and was good enough to eventually get his first signing with Epic Records at the age of 21. He was brought in by the artist Dream and Tricky. However, he was dropped after only three months because they believe he didn't have any star power and he had to butt heads with the A&R of the company. Without a degree, securing a job seemed impossible, especially because this was two years after the stock market crash of 2008 eight and the economy was still in recovery well he's telling you he doesn't think you're a star in the middle of your yeah bro in the middle of this i'm like bro i'm like i'm just how can you go so anyway long story short he, he, he hits tricky. i'm in here trying to become a star shut the like, yeah, up bro, yeah <laughs> so then tricky just hits me he's like yo you're not red zone you're not epic you're not nothing you going back they sent my back they made me wait like three four weeks before i could get my car back that was up man y'all man y'all don't know i was young man that hurt, man, that, that hurt. Things weren't looking too good for Miller, and with his daughter on the way, he had to find a way to make ends meet. Eventually, he ended up finding a job at Publix in Atlanta and was able to at least feed his family in the meantime. However, Quentin really hated his job and was still putting work into his music on the side to see if he could get anything going. And that's when he got in contact with Drake's affiliates, Boy Wanda and Obi Brian, who both liked his pen game. They would send him a few beats, he would lay down some bars for them, but everything changed when he sent in 10 bands. And Wanda was like, yo, he's with this 10 band song. He's with this hard. So yeah, I was, I was really excited. I thought I was gonna have a Drake feature. Cause at the time Drake was just doing random features for just up and coming artists. Drake is with 10 bands, man. He's going crazy over it. I'm like, oh, shit. I sent 10 bands to a couple of my friends. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know what a reference track was at this time. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you were just making a record. I was just making songs. Yes. And plus, when he said it, I'm thinking, Drake's going to get on it. So I'm like, I'm not leaking, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then later, I, I was sent a clip and it was Drake saying it. And I was like, oh, all right, well. Hey, yeah, whatever. And Quentin didn't expect Drake to actually rap the song, but he was thrilled to work with such a major artist. He even proudly represented OVO back in his home of Atlanta. He's getting flown out, having writing sessions, and begins to work with Drake to produce his fourth mixtape, If You're Reading This It's Too Late. And as we all know, when it came out, Drake was getting praised for making the best rap songs that year. But what they didn't know was that they were actually praising a young guy from Atlanta. So you get in the studio with Drake and you end up basically co-writing what became used to 10 bands, Legend, and Six Man. Yeah. I also wrote on Bless. I also wrote on Bless too. That was when I first met Big Sean um, during that session. I felt like I was, you know, a part of the shit. Like, you know, Drake literally was looking me in my face like, yo, man, this album wouldn't be possible if it weren't for you. Like, you know, you really helped you. I have no idea. Like, you saying this to a dude that was working in the bakery, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought my dream was over with after tr tricking him, dropped me off, you know? Like, I was f crying like a baby, you know? Cause I'm like, how the f else am I gonna do this? You know, they, they were the people that I knew and I ain't have nobody else, you know? So it just felt like it was just one of the best times, you know? Yeah, felt like I was on the team. However, things would take a drastic turn for Miller and Drake fans after Meek Mill came into the picture. After teaming up with Drake on Rico for his 2015 album, Dreams Worth More Than Money, Meek Mill would put out a tweet alleging that Drake has a ghostwriter, saying, stop comparing me to Drake too, he don't write his raps. That's why he ain't tweet about my album because we found out. Other artists know though, Lil Wayne and Nicki know, ask them. 
they gonna act like they don't see them tweets. Meek was mad that Drake wasn't helping to promote his album. And people were saying that the line, the girl of your dreams to me is probably not a challenge in Rico, is a diss to Meek Mill because Drake has been very close to Nicki Minaj, who was dating Meek at the time. This was a pretty crazy revelation back then, since ghostwriting wasn't as popularized as it is today. It was mind blowing for fans to find out that one of the top artists in the game didn't write all their music. And this was a different case from that of a Dr. Dre or Kanye West, who are also known to use ghostwriters on their songs, as they are more so producers and curators than they are as rappers. In a short while, the name Quentin Miller kept popping up, and eventually, a reference track for the song 10 Bands was leaked, shocking everyone even more because the song was very popular among the fans of If You're Reading This Is Too Late, and Drake had received a lot of praise for the writing on it. The whole ghostwriter conversation was steaming hot with Drake and Quentin at the center of it all. Drake's producer and longtime friend, OVO40, put out a series of tweets defending Drake, saying, There's countless number ones in songs Drake has written for others, never mind himself. That's the funny part. So if someone wants to be upset that Drake made a great album, go for it. Get mad all day, lol. But don't ever question my brother's pen. I've spent maybe 30 minutes in a studio with Q, nice enough guy, very talented. If you're asking if Q contributed to if you're reading this, yes he did. You can also see that by reading the credits. Which is a point a lot of people seem to forget when saying an artist uses ghostwriters. When a writer contributes to a project, their name is usually slipped into the credits, therefore, they aren't ghostwriting by definition. However, no one actually checks the credits for every single project to police who had help and who didn't. Which is why this case was blown way out of proportion by Meek Mill. To make matters worse, for Quentin Miller, he was now getting clowned online for some of the lyrics he wrote with people, saying that he ain't got the looks or money to be spitting lines like, the girl of your dreams to me is probably not a challenge. But Quentin would also put out a statement explaining his side of the situation, as well as downplaying the work he did on the album, saying, most of the project was done before I came into the picture. I remember him playing it for me for the first time thinking, why am I here? Like, what does he need me for? I am not and never will be a ghostwriter for Drake. I'm proud to say that we have collaborated, but I can never take credit for anything other than a few songs we worked on together. However, this would turn to be a big mistake because in trying to defend Drake, he would piss off Meek Mill. It caught me, uh, we, we was walking, we was in LA, I, I was walking to the Nike store and he approached me and this is really my first time really talking with me and basically told me like, you know, he didn't appreciate the letter that I dropped and it made him seem like it was, he was a liar or whatnot. And, and they stole off on me in the Nike store and ran. I shed blood in the Nike store on Wilshire. They tried to get me in front of paparazzi at first. It, like, they, like we kind of caught each other. I was getting out the Uber and we kind of caught each other. And then he sent his man, he was like, yo, come come over here, Meek wants to talk to you. And I was just like, I don't want to go in front of paparazzi. Like, I don't want to do that. And so like, you know, they just followed me in the Nike store. Yeah, and just popped off in the Nike store. From what we know now, Meek was allegedly instigated by Nicki Minaj, who felt like her man was being disrespected. So not only did he get abused online, he gets beat up by Meek's goons. And to make matters worse, Drake basically cuts him off after the entire incident. Quentin was really disappointed in the silence from Drake's camp because he went to bat for them and they still hung him out to dry. But he took solace in the fact that he was well known for being a part of his songs and believed that things would look up for him very soon. However, what he saw before him was more disappointment, making Quentin believe the industry had blackballed him. Man, I'm thinking like the phone is just about to just I ring off the hook. Think I'm the thinking, thing. you know, anytime anybody's involved with one song with this guy, <laughs> it's like everything, you know, and it's just like, it just wasn't like that. It's just like, it just didn't. It just didn't happen. It was like, it was strange. To add insult to injury, Drake and Meek Mill would end up clearing their differences, reuniting in 2018 for Meek's championships project. But Quentin's situation was somewhat expected because he outright told labels not to reach out to him. I'm not a writer and that's that's like the, the interesting thing and to all industry people out there and labels out there, like, please, I want y'all to know that I am not a writer. It's don't invite me to your writer's camps. Like, that was a special situation that just happened to happen. It was an opportunity, 
and you know we just happen to be on the same wave you see quentin suffers from the same problem that hinders artists with stronger pens in the industry just like partisan fontaine who wasn't happy when kanye exposed him as a ghostwriter quentin didn't want his writing to overshadow his music from the label's perspective people like quentin are more valuable in the background for their already established artists and are therefore less likely to receive opportunities since they could just keep boosting an already marketable artist on the five-year anniversary of the release of the If You're Reading This Is Too Late album, Quentin will put out a video expressing his dissatisfaction for how things happened with his career. Drake and, and me, and his best friends now, they watch basketball games and they do shows together, you know? So it's just like, what the was that even for? What was all of that for? You know, like all the, the stress that it caused, you know? And I know it, everybody else is able to move on because everybody else's careers was established my career wasn't established to so the music game labels artists whoever take a chance on me take a chance on Quinn Miller man y'all know I y'all know I do these records y'all know I got these records I could do this in my sleep take a chance on me man everybody want to kick me to the curb man everybody want me to just play the background and they just want to just uh, give me ideas for this person. Give me ideas for that person, man. Give me, give me the opportunity, man. Give me the ball, man. I see a lot of artists out here that I know for a fact I can box with, man. I can box with all these. Man. With more and more time passing and with bills to pay, Quentin would continue lending his pen to other artists, and it was even revealed that one of the main reasons Meek Mill opened this can of worms in the first place was because Quentin had refused to write for him on multiple occasions. It was like maybe after the third time, then I, I told Drake about it, and I was like, man, it's kind of weird, man. Like he's, he's he's just pressing it so hard, but I'm like turning it down, bro. Like I'm not trying to work, with, bro. I'm trying to work with you. And so he was like, yeah, that is weird. And then Meek was tweeting stuff before he tweeted my name he was tweeting like little sub stuff and me and drake were like screenshotting and sending it to each other like yo you think he's talking about this yo you think he's talking about this and then next thing you know he says he puts it all out there and that just that just changed everything this shows meek's entire statement about not tricking his fans being absolutely bullshit pretending to be the shining light of rap purity and public but only exposing the operation when they don't let you in is straight diabolical behavior not to mention hypocritical it reminds you of a kid who takes the ball home once they start losing although drake doesn't leave the situation either without any blame quentin turned down meek mill multiple times downplayed his involvement in writing drake songs got beat up and got publicly humiliated all because he wanted to be loyal to drake the least that drake could do was keep working with him since most of his fans didn't care if Drake used ghostwriters. Maybe just because I was just a writer or, you know, I don't know. I, it was just like, I just, I just didn't matter. Just like, this guy, you know, even with, with drama and them, you know, like, just kind of just throwing my whole life, you know, on the back burner, just like, uh, you know, whatever. Just to get out of Nick, you know, like, but what about me? What about me taking care of my family? And, you know, the fact that I put my whole life into this shit. I don't have no other skills. I ain't go to college you know like i make music that's that's my skill what's even crazier is that he only made thirty thousand dollars for all the songs he wrote for drake's mixtape now that isn't all really drake's fault yes he should have been paid more but remember in the beginning when i said quentin got dropped from epic records back when he was 21 well it turns out they dropped him but kept his publishing meaning they basically took all of his royalty money for years until 2019 when he finally managed to leave the deal Quentin's life after writing for Drake can be described as getting dealt a bad hand over and over again. From losing his leg in an accident in 2016 to almost getting scammed by Big Sean in 2022. I'm like, man, this is a real, this is a full circle moment, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, this is full circle, this is full circle. So I'm really like looking up to it. And then maybe like two weeks, a week before the album drops, he's, he's just not responding to me at all. Then like a week before, I'm in the studio with Hit Boy. I just randomly hear in a conversation with Hit, yeah, the album dropped next week. I'm like, wait, what? I didn't even know. So then I start hitting him and then I'm getting texts from his manager. Now I'm only talking to his manager. I'm like, well, what, what happened? So I'm talking to the manager, then this come out. We still ain't signing paperwork and nothing. My name was not on the credits. It was not on the credits for like the first three months. So I'm blowing him up. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Cause I didn't know we was doing the ghostwriter thing. Cause if that was the case, I would have asked for some cash. And they're just like, Nah, man, nah, it's just uh, until we get all the paperwork, we can't get the credits. We can't get everybody's name on the credits. 
But I'm like, but everybody else's name is on it. Despite now seeming to accept his role as a writer in the industry, he faces controversy every time he tried to promote his work. I've been still writing for people ever since. You know, I, I done work with Nas, Big Sean, Jeezy, Ty Dolla Sign, but like a bunch of other people. You know, I never really wanted to be a writer. And, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's an interesting sport, you know. I think I have more of a, a passion to, to just be creative. After this interview came out, some fans began to discredit Nas's entire catalog, while others were once again clowning Quentin for daring to mention that he worked with Nas, since he's generally revered for having one of the greatest pens in hip hop history. Nas's team had to reach out to Quentin, forcing him to clear things up, while also explaining his perspective. I also mentioned other artists that I worked with, from GZ to Jeremiah to Todd Dallasan. I mentioned other artists. Writers post their work and talk about their work all the time. You know why? It also helps with the business of writing when people know that you are part of certain things. It makes people more prone to work with you. It's kind of part of the job. Naming your resume or your catalog or whatever, it kind of goes with it. But it's not that way with me because I just so happen to have had a situation with the biggest artist in the world and it turned into a whole fucking ghost writing scan. And now I am the ghost. Now anytime people work with me, it's like I'm supposed to be a ghost. But I'm not a fucking ghost. You don't make money being a ghost. They don't pay you. Artists don't give a fuck if you have money or not. They do not pay you. So if you don't get paid from being a part of this sh to get opportunities to get paid, why would I want to be a fucking ghost? If you work with Quentin Miller, you worked with Quentin Miller. And you better be okay with saying that you work with Quentin Miller. Now, when it comes to the Nas situation, I was just, I pulled up on Hit Boy. That was a, a situation with Hit Boy. I'm in the room. I bounce some ideas out. There we go. Clear it up. I just bounce some ideas. Couple ideas went. That's all that happened with the Nas sh But I am not a fucking ghost. I am not a ghost. Again, being forced to downplay his involvement just like the Drake situation. Nowadays, Quentin Miller is still trying to make strides in the industry despite being hurt so many times. In fact, he recently popped up on Kanye's well-received Vultures album as a writer and had been spotted with his crew in the months leading up to its release. 